What is up guys, it is your favorite Taco Lotus here today and welcome back to the Nerdcore Nerd Corner and in today's video we'll be giving you my episode review, thoughts and impressions on the third episode of Orange. And I guess that I'll also have to talk a little bit about episode 2 since I actually did not make a video on episode 2 last week. Um, no particular reason as to why other than the fact that I just woke up really really late in the day that day and I just wasn't feeling it. I, I did watch the episode but I just I wasn't up to making a video and I just really haven't been making videos at all these last couple weeks. But uh, it's time to get back on track. So here we are talking about episodes 2 and 3 of Orange. Now last week in episode 2 I'll just recap a little bit. <laughs> I just want to say that Naho is definitely wife and material yo. She knows how to cook and clean her hobbies involve housework like <laughs> she's modest and she seems real loyal Naho is like grade a a1 wifey material like we don't love these hoes we love these not hoes <laughs> like on some real shit it's funny though because I fucks with my man Kakuru, right? Because he reminds me of myself. And it's funny because usually when you see like these romance stories and like these, these shoujo stories and stuff like that, they're not, a lot of times they're very unrealistic in how like some of the awkward situations or the conversations the, the characters have are, it's, 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 it's um, unrealistic in some of the ways it's portrayed, but maybe it's because I can relate to this a lot more because Kakuru does some of the same things that I, I would do in some of these situations, but I feel like this is a lot more realistic because like when he found out that Naho uh, likes, to, likes to cook and stuff and he was like, uh, well, you, maybe you should make me lunch or I forget it, however he said it, but he basically jokingly said, well, you should make me lunch. I was like, I would do the same thing. I'd be like, oh, so you like to cook, huh? Well, then you should bring me lunch tomorrow. And I'd be saying it half jokingly, but I'd also be half hoping that they actually bring me lunch because one, a nigga like to eat and two, if they really can cook, it's something to look forward to because a girl that can cook you know what i'm saying that's grade a a1 wifey material because all these girls out here they can't really cook nowadays you know what i'm saying and i can cook myself i can make my own meals you know i'm perfectly capable of that but it's always nice to have somebody that can cook for you you know what i'm saying so <laughs> so there's that but then you know now she actually goes home and she's like all giddy and then overwhelmed with joy and like like mad hype about making this lunch she makes like this extravagant looking meal for him and then she ultimately really can't bring herself to give it to him until like the very end of the episode which is you know it, eventually she did give it to him and he was like yeah this is what i was waiting for he and then he, he says to her he's like you know i was kind of half joking but i was hoping that you would bring me this so when you didn't give me anything i was like oh man but now she gave me something I'm like oh man so you know what i'm saying i i'm really enjoying this series because i just i can relate more to like something uh, blah, 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 tripping over my words i can relate more to the situations that kakuru is in and the, um just like the interactions he's having with naho it's like it's reminiscent of like stuff that's happened in my own life and just like i said i feel like i see a lot of myself in kakuru which by the way i hate this man's name well i ain't gonna say i hate this man's name this that's kind of a fucked up thing to say you hate somebody's name but k the name kakuru just reminds me of cockroach and so every time i hear his name or i say his name that's what i think of and it's I don't like it, but whatever. <laughs> so that, that's really all I wanted to touch on when it comes to episode two. Oh wait, no, there's one more thing before we jump into episode three. And that is the fact that, okay, it's it's basically confirmed at this point that uh, Naho and Sua are married in the future and that that child that we saw in episode one is actually their child. And all I can think of, every time we go, we flash forward, I guess, cause it's not really a flashback, but the flash forward into the future, when I see Naho and Sua together, I'm just like, so, your boy Kakuru likes this girl. I'm pretty sure you knew he liked this girl. He dies at the age of like 17. Your homie dies and you get his girl pregnant. What kind of treachery? This is grimy. This is backstabbery on a whole new level. I'm not accustomed to stuff like this now. Sue is grimy, but that's just how I see it anyway. And you know, I'm half joking, but I'm half serious. Like, yo, there's uh, surely there's some explanation as to how this all occurred and it wasn't just like that. Like. Kakuru died and he saw his chance maybe he was like Naho's shoulder to cry on and then she eventually like opened up to him and then etc etc he confessed his feelings and then she was like well I guess it was the next best thing and basically used him as like the rebound because that's the impression that I get but hey so we move on to episode three and um things are still uh progressing slowly between um Kakuru and Naho one thing that I don't understand or I I'm not quite sure of yet is is Naho receiving multiple letters or is it one letter that has everything already written in it or is there like is it being updated somehow magically or like our new entries being added like I'm not quite sure how the whole you know letter from the future thing is working like is, is it just one letter and it's constantly being updated is it just one letter and she hasn't read through all of it and if that's the case why doesn't she read it all at once or is she receiving you know a a new letter like every morning or something like that like i'm 
I'm still not quite sure how that works and I don't know if that's going to be explained and if it doesn't get explained it's something that's gonna kind of bother me in the back of my mind but I won't I won't harp on it too much but you know that's just something that I'm wondering about also we see that Naho's got some competition little Mizueta senpai you know what I'm saying shorty looking kind of bad you know she's trying to put the moves down on our boy Kakaru and uh yeah I mean you can't really be mad at her because even if even if you were somebody who knew how Naho felt clearly you know her and Naho aren't friends so it's not really like she's doing her dirty or anything like that it's just like hey you snooze you lose if she's gonna make the first move and Kakaru my boy he was like you know I, I like how she looks you know what I'm saying so basically he's like you know she ain't really hitting on much you know I don't think she anything all like that but I'll smash you know what I'm saying <laughs> so it's like I'm sure Kakaru has a hint or somewhat of an idea because he doesn't seem ignorant of other people's feelings and he seems pretty clever and pretty smart, especially when it comes to his social intelligence. Like, he definitely seems to have an understanding of how people feel. So I have no doubt that he knows Ka uh, Naho likes him a little bit. I'm sure he's, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not doubtful, but, you know, he's he's not 100% sure because, you know, as guys, we're always stupid and no matter how smart and intelligent we are, even when it comes to, like, these sociable situations and the, and the feelings of another girl, even if we think for a fact that um a girl likes us back there's always going to be some doubt at least i know that's how i was like even if i was like 100 percent confident or at least i was telling myself i was 100 percent sure that this girl liked me there'd always be like a a, a a suspicion in the back of my mind that maybe she didn't and maybe i'm just interpreting it all wrong so maybe that's definitely how it feels and that's definitely something that was confirmed in my mind or at least something that i felt had more weight behind it once he asked her you know is there anyone that you like and then in return naho gets all flustered and she says nah there isn't and then she asks him back and he's like well is there anyone that you like and he's like nope and i'm just like yeah that's kind of how it'd be in real life because if if you like somebody and they say there's nobody that they like well the only logical well actually no that's not the logical thing to do but the realistic thing that's going to happen is like nah i don't like nobody either you know you just gonna you shrug it off play it cool and act like you don't you don't have no feelings for nobody else because we can't be out here catching feelings if the feelings not going to be returning you know what i'm saying because otherwise it's not going to be a good time it's it's not going to be a good time but, um, yeah, I've seen that some people, like, they, they were pissed off about, I hope I'm saying her name right, but Ueda Senpai, and I'm just like, yo, you can't even, if, if Naho's not gonna make her move, then this girl might as well, and I, I was surprised that, uh, Kakura would say yes at, at all, honestly, it's not something that I would have expected him to do, because even if, um, you know, Naho said she didn't like anyone, or maybe it's just because he's not as persistent or as confident as, like, I would be, but, even given that situation like when she said there's nobody that she liked me personally i still would have felt like you know i can make you like me not force it but you know what i'm saying he's a pretty smooth dude so i think he would have been able you know to coerce her, not coerce her because that's that has a negative connotation but basically he just would have get he would have been able to get her to return her feelings at least that's how i would have felt i would have felt like you know even if she says that that's still not a hundred percent confirmation you know what i'm saying and even if it is true for the moment you know through me putting a mac down on her and, sh and, and you know swinging these moves i think that i can change that i still would have given it more effort and more time before i would have made the decision to move on to somebody else but that's just me i mean uh Kakaru is a fictional character and we are obviously not the same person so maybe his mindset and his outlook on it was completely different he's obviously coming from a different perspective but that's just me giving my own two cents but you know i don't blame him for you know saying yes to, to old girl but I just wouldn't have done it. But obviously we see that it's taken a really heavy emotional toll on Naho because when she sees that he says yes, and when he's out there in the courtyard or whatever talking to her, um, she basically runs out into the hallway. I'm like, damn, could you have been any more obvious that you're upset about this? Sua kind of walks out after and he's like, you like Kakaru, don't you? And all, she, and all she does is we get this slow turn. She looks back at him, tears well up in her eyes. She shakes a little bit and then she runs off into the distance down the hallway. And I'm just like, damn. That, that that hurt me that hurt deep down inside just a little bit but at the same time i'm like it's kind of your fault because like i know you did what the letter said and you did try to tell him that he shouldn't go out with her but you were kind of you were really slow to the punch you should have confessed your feelings but i i understand you know because that's just not how how it goes down like in real life like i said this romance story is pretty realistic so far for the most part and it's just she she's shy and nervous like she just was afraid to admit how she really felt and even though she was seemingly on the path to doing that for starting off by telling Kakuru that he shouldn't go out with that girl i guess she just like i said too slow to the punch too little too late and so it just didn't work out in her favor 
And then we get another flash forward to 10 years in the future. We see the gangs all there and they're reading, I guess they dug up like a time capsule or something that had like all their um their hopes and dreams or, or something like that, like their aspirations for what they want to do when they when they got older. And um, everybody's reading theirs. Obviously, Kakuru isn't there because he died when they were younger. Everybody reads theirs. And then we get to Kakuru and they're like, well, should we read it? And, he's, and they're like, well, basically no one else is going to read it. So if we don't, who will? They read it and already straight from the jump, you can tell that his is a lot different from everybody else's because most of everyone else's is like, I want to be a model, I want to be a doctor, or I want to be a soccer player. And Kakaru's is like a letter to everybody. And so you, you get the idea, you get the impression that basically he was contemplating suicide for a while, clearly before he took his own life. and. Apparently, the group didn't know that he committed suicide intentionally. It, 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 everyone was under the impression that he died via some accident. And it turns out that this was intentional. He took his own life. And he's probably, in my mind, I would think that he's probably been thinking about committing suicide ever since his mother died. And then between, you know, Naho not returning his feelings and maybe some other events are going to happen down the line. He was just like, screw it. I have nothing left to live for. I'm sick of dealing with all these, you know, these different troubles and tribulations that I've been having going on in my life. High school sucks. I'm tired of it all. And he took his own life. Now, I don't know what events he's going to be going through from now on in this point. I don't know how his life is going to end up spiraling out of control but obviously my man's going through some tragic and depressing times uh bad enough for him to take his own life and you just got to understand some of the psychological effects that some of these tragedies that are going to take place are going to have on him and i'm just wondering you know what what is going to take place that is going to have such a negative impact on him that he decides he has to commit suicide because so far the only really big tragedy that's happened to him is his mother passing away and i don't remember if it was explained or not how she passed away it, it might have been a very tragic incident that's like scarred him psychologically but um, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. So, really great two episodes in my opinion. I'm really enjoying the series. I'm really looking forward to seeing how it's going, how it's going to progress. Uh, I want to see what happens next between uh, Ueda and Kakuru because uh, I want to see what happens with their relationship. Because Kakuru did find the note that tells him no, that Naho wrote like he he did she didn't want him to go out with Ueda. So maybe he'll break up with her. But I don't know. He doesn't seem like the kind of guy that'll break up with her right away after just um, you know accepting her feelings and, and saying that he'll go out with her. But um, who knows, maybe his feelings for Naho are strong enough that he'll do just that. We'll see how it goes. But those are my thoughts. Definitely let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think, how you guys feel about the series, if you're still watching it. And uh, yeah, hit this video with a like if you haven't already. Subscribe so you guys can stay tuned for all the awesome content I'm bringing you. And with all that being said, that's pretty much all I have for today. So I will catch you guys next time. Later.